if I lose, it'll be a fight. It's not going to be, you know, the Kai Green show where they're just going to walk in and they're going to hand him a trophy and it's, oh, you know, here you go, Kai. Here's your check. Here's your ring. Congratulations. No, he's going to have to fight and earn his money that night. Like that night, if any other night that he ever fought, that's going to be the night that he fights. Anyone else I'm not worried about. The New York Pro Bodybuilding Competition, being held at the Tribeca Performing Arts Center on May 28th, is one of the most important pro qualifiers of the year. Several of the top athletes in the sport will be vying for a spot at this year's Olympia. Only five will get it. Ronnie Rockall and Marcus Haley will be there. Cedric McMillan, fresh from his win of the Europa, will be there. Kai Green, who has been quietly training, nearly in secret, will also be making his reappearance. Also battling for those elusive Olympia spots will be IFBB pro Craig Richardson. Since turning pro in 2000, Craig has had varied success on stage. Toiling away in semi-obscurity, he has nonetheless carved out a solid career in bodybuilding. His sponsorships and personal appearances, along with his day job as a truant officer, have enabled Craig to make a decent living as a bodybuilder. Despite his responsibilities to his job and family, he has managed to consistently compete at the upper levels of the sport, appearing on the Olympia stage four times. His physique is comparable in shape and style to Victor Martinez, and in fact, he lost to Victor in 2000 by only one point. In the gym with his workout partner of 13 years, Harley Bright, he balances intensity with careful attention to form and a concern for his joints and tendons. Right, let's go now, what you? Beautiful, redeem yourself, Craig, now. Come on. All you, now, let's go. I've come here to Body Works Gym in Craig's hometown of Patterson, New Jersey to begin to shed some light on this often overlooked and underrated bodybuilder. Craig and Harley immediately make me feel welcome and don't hesitate to give me insight into the finer points of their training as we go along. At several points during our shooting, Craig finds it necessary to apologize and explain to me why he's not using the typical giant weight stacks that fans of bodybuilding videos have come to expect. I know there's probably a lot of people out there thinking, oh, you know, I thought these guys would train heavier than this. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we're not the strongest guys around, obviously, as you can see. We worry about more form than weight, which is always important. So don't, you know, judge the way we're training today because you say, oh, listen, these guys, I thought they trained a lot harder, a lot heavier. We're training very hard, you know. Our muscles can't actually physically do another rep. So, you know, your muscle doesn't know weight. All it knows is stress and fatigue. So that's the most important thing you guys out there if you're watching this, you know, just don't get yourself hurt by trying to follow, you know, the crowd and let your ego get in the way and try to lift too much weight. There's life after this. You know, uh, I have kids. Even at 36, I have a granddaughter. I don't want to be able to one day bend down and pick her up, you know, without my back going out or, you know, uh, my knees buckling under me. So those are things also to take into account. The more that I learn about this sport, the more that I see that many of the accepted cliches are often wrong. Craig is yet another athlete who destroys the notion that heavy weights are the only way to get big. Just as we saw in my recent documentaries about Rodney Roller and Victor Martinez. So what is it that has held Craig back from the kind of success he desires? By his own admission, his conditioning has not been what it should have been these past few years. Checking his form in the mirror, he is unhappy with what he sees. The changes in his body that he had expected six weeks out from the contest have not been happening as rapidly as he had hoped. In 2000, I was working with Jason Arts, which uh, he's doing my nutrition again. And it was the best condition I'd ever been in in my entire life. 
I'd never been in this condition before. And I've never been in this condition again after. Uh, so I've hooked back up with him and hopefully he can get me back into this condition again. There you go, pull it back a little bit. Two weeks later, we Just meet with Jason Arntz at Diamond Gym. Just He's not alarmed by what he sees, but more. there's no time to waste. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they just want to make it, but. That's okay. It's soft. Which means it's mostly water. Right, that's, that's the, the last to come in, is soft. Yeah, okay. And well, to, not to counting his glutes. <clears throat> to tell you the truth, I mean, there's a little bit, a little bit of fat. Not that I'm worried about yeah. it. The, the, it's, just part okay. of, it's just part of the process. You're four weeks. You're still yeah. going to retain a little, little bit. But Where for the most part, no, a little bit of his glutes, um, but the rest mostly is water. But you know, it's just a, it's just a matter of getting that little extra detail out of your glutes, which is going to refine your whole body even more. Yeah. I've known Craig since I was uh, since I was a teenager. He's the kind of guy you want to work with. You know, he's going to listen. You know, he's going to take uh, you know take direction well. And uh, you know, you really don't have to say he, he doesn't really second guess anything that I, I do with him now. You know, he knows me and we've worked together in the past and I helped him earn his pro card at the Nationals when he turned pro. So I think he has uh, more faith in me than he does with most, most other trainers. The question now is, even if Craig can get as conditioned as he did in 2000, will it be enough for the New York pro and beyond? It has been suggested by some that bodybuilders like Craig, Victor Martinez, and Phil Heath were born at the wrong time. That the era of the classic physique has passed, and now we are in the reign of the huge mass monsters. Favoring aesthetics over mass, balance over extremes, Craig has never wanted to play the size game and push his body past the 250 pound mark. I will be exploring this theme further in my documentary about Victor Martinez, but it's enough to say at this point that it may very well be a factor in Craig's continuing struggle. Is this attention to balance holding Craig back? Must one take things to an extreme in order to win? In the era of the mass monster, there is always the temptation to put on size, size which can sometimes ruin a physique. Bodybuilding legend Sean Ray dealt with this very problem toward the end of his career. I will tell you this, it took every ounce of my fiber to be like Zane and Labrada in regards to not changing what got me where I was. I couldn't push the envelope. With Mohammed bin Aziza coming up, pushing the envelope, I saw where that was going to lead. That was going to take me to the wrong place I didn't want to go. So can you imagine a sprinter trying to hold back, you know, running as fast as he could? I had to hold back as far as putting on extra weight putting on too much size because I knew my niche was, I was never gonna be 50 pounds heavier to be competitive. So I had to be sharper and more conditioned. And that's what I had to pay attention to, was actually kind of staying a little bit smaller. In today's economy, you gotta be bigger because the envelope and the bar has been raised so high, you can't go in there and hold back on how much poundage you're lifting and how many calories you're taking. You've gotta be competitive with these guys. Is it impossible for a classic physique to win in the current bodybuilding climate? Does Craig have a chance at the New York Pro? Jason Arntz thinks he does. If you really look at it, physiques have changed since the 90s to today. So you have a, you have a different, everything's different in the sport, you know, but as far as judging is concerned, I think they've kind of steered away from the, just the overall genuine mass monsters of the sport. They're paying a lot more attention to detail, which is great for guys like Craig. I think they're looking for a well-balanced, classic physique with a small midsection, wide shoulders, big legs, and, and so forth. You know, but guys like Phil Heath and, and Victor and, and still Dexter to this day and, and guys like Craig coming up, you know, it's, it's more of a classic physique. It's just a matter of them looking so perfect that they could actually give them the nod instead of the guy who has a little more size on him. The judging pendulum may be swinging back, but right now Craig has more pressing issues to deal with. With only four weeks left, it's time to tighten up on his diet and be stricter with his training schedule. From here on out, it's crunch time. The only person that you know worries me a little bit is Kai Green. I mean, uh, if anyone's not worried about Kai, 
you know, then something's wrong. Uh, but I believe if I catch Kai slipping, you know, if he comes in anywhere like he came in at the Olympia, I believe I'll take him uh, because my condition's going to be spot on. And put it this way, if I lose, you know, it'll be a fight. It's not going to be, you know, the Kai Green show where they're just going to walk in and they're going to hand him a trophy and it's, oh, you know, here you go, Kai. Here's your check. Here's your ring. Congratulations. No, he's going to have to fight and earn his money that night. Like that night, if any other night that he ever fought, that's going to be the night that he fights. Anyone else I'm not worried about. I've been saying this to him when, when we started in preparation for this contest together. This is going to be a rebirth for him, you know, because uh, this is an opportunity for him to showcase himself, to get a look that he deserves, um, for people to see him in the kind of light that he deserves to be seen in, and for him to move forward from that, you know. So I, I think he's got a great shot at doing very well in the New York Pro, and uh, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. And this isn't to seem, you know, cocky or everyone else is a means to an end, you know. Everyone else is there. They're there for the same reason that I'm there. Um, but I just don't think it's going to be that close between me and anyone else. It'll be Kai Green and myself, and then there's everyone else. So, you know, be prepared for the fight because I'm, I'm coming. Coming up next time on Unsung Hero, Craig talks a little bit about his delinquent past. This corner here is actually where I actually got arrested twice. Um, for selling crack. We check in on his progress and see if Craig's confidence about his prospects at the New York Pro remains high. This is documentary filmmaker Mike Pulsanella reporting for MHP. Who has the best six pack in bodybuilding? MHP does with its new sugar free, low carb, ready to eat power pack protein pudding. When you're looking for a great tasting muscle building snack, do you reach for a protein bar? Most bars are loaded with calories, carbs, fats, sugar, and stomach churning sugar alcohols. Do I really want this thing? Is this really a protein bar or a candy bar? I mean, all the sugar in here, what I really want is power pack pudding. Mmm, tastes great. 30 grams of protein, zero sugars, low carbs, my kind of snack. New from MHP, Power Pack Pudding is the great tasting on the go snack for the serious bodybuilder. With 30 grams of ready to eat protein and a handy resealable container, Power Pack Pudding is the one quick snack that you can feel good about. You want the best six pack in bodybuilding? MHP's ready to eat Power Pack Pudding. To get instant updates on all my video projects, subscribe to the Gato MJP YouTube page or become a Mike Pulsanella Facebook friend.